Before surgery, you will receive a call from our scheduler to confirm your surgery date and to set up an appointment with the Center for Perioperative Medicine. You will have your preoperative testing done at that appointment. Plan to spend at least two hours at the hospital. Please be able to provide information regarding your health history and a list of medications that you take. If you have an advanced directive or a living will, bring it with you as well. You will receive a preoperative packet that will provide you with the information regarding your hospital stay, visitor information, and hospital directions. If you are on blood thinner medications, you will need approval from your prescribing doctor to stop them at least five to 10 days prior to your surgery. These medications may include Coumadin, Heparin, Plavix, Aspirin, Motrin, Aleve, Advil, and Ibuprofen. The night before surgery, do not eat or drink anything after midnight. This will decrease the chances of nausea and vomiting from the anesthesia. Please do not chew gum or have any hard candy either. The day before surgery, you will receive a call informing you of your arrival time and surgery time. For any questions after 6 p.m., please call 216-844-2260. On the day of your surgery, please take the instructed morning medications with just a sip of water. Please arrive at the hospital two hours prior to your scheduled surgery time. If you are coming to Case Medical Center, you will register at the Mather Admitting Desk. This is located at the Cornell Road entrance to the hospital. You will need to have your insurance card and photo ID to register. Please do not bring any valuables with you. The operation will typically take four to five hours. Your family members should check in at the surgery waiting desk on the second floor of Mather. A nurse will update your family on your progress throughout the surgery at the information desk. Your physician will speak with family members directly after surgery. You can expect to spend at least one to two hours in the recovery room following surgery. A typical stay after a robotic radical prostatectomy is often one to two days. During your hospital stay, you will be monitored closely by our team. This will include frequent vital signs, checking your blood pressure and heart rate, post-operative blood work, as well as an evaluation of your pain level. You will be given pain medication through your IV initially until you are able to receive oral pain medications. Your diet will start with clear liquids and then we will advance you as tolerated to a regular diet. It is often common after surgery to feel bloated. We will help you to get up to a chair and we will encourage you to walk with supervision for your safety. Walking is important as it helps to restore bowel function, diminish bloating, and prevent blood clots. Please remember that postoperatively, it is very important that you use your incentive spirometer, which we will give you in the hospital, to help you take deep breaths at least 10 times an hour while you are awake. This will help you decrease the risk of developing a pneumonia. You will also be wearing sequential compression devices that squeeze your legs this will help promote blood circulation and prevent blood clots. Always keep them on unless walking in the hallway or washing up in the bathroom. Upon discharge, you will need a ride home from the hospital. Please make arrangements for this prior to surgery and plan to have your ride at the hospital by 10 a.m. the morning of discharge. Plan to be discharged by noon. Although your surgery was done minimally invasively, remember that this was a major surgery and your body needs time to heal. For your safety, please have someone available to help you with your daily needs for a few days after discharge. All patients will be discharged with a urinary catheter called a Foley for seven to 10 days after surgery to assist with healing. This catheter is held in place in your bladder by a balloon. It will provide continuous drainage of the urine from your bladder into an external collection bag that will need to be emptied as it fills up. This catheter should only be removed by your medical team. Should it be pulled or dislodged, please proceed to the emergency room. It is very important that only your physician or his or her team replace the catheter if it becomes dislodged. You may have a drain coming out of a small incision on your abdomen. This drain is placed to prevent fluid from building up. Please record the drain output daily and bring that record to your follow-up appointment. A pain medication will be prescribed for you. 
As your pain decreases, extra strength Tylenol may be sufficient. Colace is a stool softener, and this should be taken as directed as well. An antibiotic may be prescribed to be started the day before your catheter is removed to prevent infection. It should be taken twice a day for three days. Following surgery, please refrain from driving while you continue to take pain medications or while your catheter is in. Avoid taking baths while the urine tube and the abdominal drains are in. Also, avoid heavy lifting as well as straining or pushing with bowel movements. It may take some time to get your normal appetite back. It is often helpful to break your meals into small frequent meals or snacks until your appetite is back to normal. Remember, walking is a great way to get your bowels moving, improve your energy, and your appetite. For the care of your wounds, you can shower 48 hours after your surgery. Gently pat the incisions dry. Small amounts of redness at the incision edges are okay. Small amount of clear or slightly bloody drainage may be seen. If you develop drainage that soaks the dressing, contact your physician's office. If you have an abdominal drain, it is still okay to shower. Just lightly dry around the insertion site and apply a clean dressing if needed. Most people are comfortable in sweatpants or loose-fitting clothes after surgery due to the bloating. This type of apparel also makes it easier to manage the catheter. Kegel exercises will strengthen your pelvic muscles. Stronger pelvic muscles help you regain some control when you urinate. Common occurrences after surgery may include bladder spasms, these are typically associated with sudden discomfort in the lower abdomen, a strong urge to urinate, or a sudden leakage of urine around the catheter. If this occurs frequently, please call your physician's office and we can fill a prescription for you. Bruising around the port site is not uncommon and is no cause for worry. It will typically improve as you heal. Bloody drainage around the catheter or in the urine is often seen. It usually occurs with physical activity or bowel movements. It should improve with time and increasing your fluid intake. Scrotal or penile swelling and bruising is not abnormal. It can occur immediately after surgery or a number of days later. It will typically resolve in one to two weeks. It is helpful to elevate the scrotum on a rolled towel when sitting or lying. This will help decrease the swelling. Also, wearing supportive briefs may be helpful. Perineal discomfort is a pain between your anus and your scrotum. It may last for several weeks postoperatively. It will usually resolve on its own. It may be helpful to elevate your feet on a stool when you have a bowel movement and increase your fiber and water intake to soften your stools. Also, decrease straining or pressure that will add to this discomfort. Elevate your legs while you are sitting. Flex your legs intermittently throughout the day and walk. Mild lower leg or ankle swelling is not abnormal and should go away in a week or two. However, if it worsens or persists, or is accompanied by shortness of breath, please proceed to the emergency room. If swelling is only in one leg, it could be a sign of a blood clot. Please go to the emergency room. Abdominal distension, constipation, and bloating are common after surgery. You can use stool softeners as directed, drink prune juice, and or use milk of magnesia. You should have a follow-up appointment within 7 to 10 days after your surgery for the catheter removal. This appointment may be with our nurse practitioner. You will also need a follow-up appointment in a few weeks to review your pathology. Some signs and symptoms that require immediate attention. A fever over 102 degrees. Severe chills. Redness or large amount of drainage from the abdominal incisions. Swelling vomiting, abdominal pain, or bloating that persists. No urine output. Chest pain or shortness of breath. Pain or swelling in the leg or calf. If your catheter becomes dislodged, it must be reinserted immediately by your urologist team. If any of these do occur, go to the emergency room and call your doctor's office at 216-844-3009. Thank you for choosing University Hospitals. We look forward to caring for you.